In My Story, Emil and Carl, written by Yankev Glashtevin, translated by Jeffrey Chandler, two boys named Emil and Carl go on an adventure of a lifetime, with betrayal, lies, love, and hope, and with nothing more than one another to rely on. This is Emil and Carl. The story starts off in the city of Vienna, Austria, where Carl lays hopelessly in his room, after just watching his mother be carried away by three large men, with bad intent. Page 3, Chapter 1. Three big, hulking men dragged his mother away from him. Her screams could be heard outside, but no one came to help. Due to his father's death when he was a very young boy, Carl is now homeless and only has one last chance. A Jewish boy named Emil, who lived up the road. But when Carl gets there, much to his surprise, Emil's father was beaten to death, and his mother sat there in shock, saying nothing. Eventually, his mother is taken away. Who knows where, and Emil and Carl are left, only with each other. Then Carl has an idea, to sleep in the old cellar in the basement of the complex that Carl used to live in. The next morning they are woken by a janitor and his wife to take care of the area. The janitor says that Emil and Carl may live there with them until they can get their feet on the ground. But when the janitor and his wife go out, Carl has the ignorant idea of going outside and eventually pressures Emil into going too. When they go outside, they are taken away by a man who had seen them. They are brought to a large area full of Jews and Jew helpers who have to scrub rocks with their bare hands. But when one of the leaders spots the boys and tells them to come with me on page 69, he lets them go along with an older man. The boys feel hope, but it's not before they leave that Carl breaks down on page 52. Maybe because he's a Jew. Carl begins to understand why he is here. He is here because he is friends with a Jew. He begins to repeat because he is a Jew over and over and over while he works and works and works. Carl never shares these feelings with Emil until they are separated at the end. When the boys return, they discover the janitor was taken, and the wife has to go live with her sister out in the city. But first, she brings them to the park, where Jews are being tormented for the enjoyment of others. And they find a woman named Matilda and her crazy friend named Hans, who take the boys in and bring them to their house. As time goes by, Carl gets sick and sleeps for many days, and awakes once to see Hans acting strange. He was acting normal, instead of yelling, like on page 120. My name, my name is Hans, Hans, and jumping all over the place. He's reading literature and talking softly. The boys soon find out that they are both a member of an underground organization against the Nazi brigade. One day, the boys wake up, and everyone is gone, except for Hans. But soon, four large men show up. Hans tries to put on the act, but it's too late. He was ratted out by another member of the group. When the boys witness the commotion, and Matilda returns home, the boys leave. And Matilda leads them over to her sister-in-law, who brings them to a place filled with other children, all leaving their homes. But soon, the news is told, and the boys will be leaving each other, and neither of them know when they will meet again. The sorrow goes on as the boys write letters to each other, and go on their own ways. As Carl takes his train, he meets a girl also going where he is, who shines some hope on his future, some hope that Carl so desperately needs. You just watched the book review of Emil and Carl from a World War II history project in Miss Murray's class. Thank you very much.